Another good socially responsible choice, I'd say. Other CFPC projects that also serve to highlight the social accountability agenda include the recently approved establishment of the Aboriginal Working Group. It will focus on the health and health care of Aboriginal Canadians through the, through the education, training and practice support for family physicians caring for these populations. The health needs of rural Canadians and the supports for those family physicians who practice in rural and remote areas of our country continue to be an important focus of concern. To me, access to excellent primary and family medical health care becomes an issue of social justice for this significant segment of our population. Our patients' medical home vision is designed to address the needs for these Canadians and to support their family physicians in providing comprehensive care in a model which not only facilitates timely access, but supports the family physicians and teams in doing so. Ongoing dialogue with and commitment to our members from rural and remote areas of the country will remain a high priority for the executive and board. Across the country, our departments of family medicine have launched numerous global health initiatives, all oriented around partnerships around the world with the goal of enhancing family medical and primary care services, provider and family medicine resident education to carry out our obligation of social accountability beyond our borders. The CFPC has enthusiastically supported the pre-FMF meetings of family physicians who have interest in this area these last couple of years and the recent approval of Global Health as a program in the section of family med physicians with special interest in focused practices. A proposal has been submitted to the Association of Faculties of Medicine of Canada on an initiative to rebuild medical programs in Haiti after the devastating earthquake with specific references to family medicine. We have also supported the establishment of the Bezreur Center for Global Health in Montreal, whose mandate is to improve health and reduce health inequities in the world's resource-limited countries, communities and vulnerable populations through family medicine and primary care. Quelque choix vraiment bon. Pretty good choices. We also recognize the contribution of many undergraduate and postgrad programs across the country that emphasize a socially accountable curriculum, including the University of Saskatchewan, the Northern Ontario School of Medicine, and St. Michael's Family Medicine Re Residency Program in Toronto, to name just a few. I know there are so many others. We address other issues that may seem less obvious as issues of social accountability, but are so nonetheless. These include patient safety and organizational accountability with regards to the management of our relationship with the healthcare industry and its impact on carrying out our CME programs with an eye to full transparency. Our members are active in many areas in the field of environmental health. Our President Rob Boulay, with the CMA President Dr. Jeff Turnbull, recently sent a letter to Prime Minister Stephen Harper to voice our opposition to asbestos production and the continued sale of asbestos from Canada to the developing world. So let's continue to work in partnership in a climate of collegiality and cooperation with government, public agencies, our sister professions and healthcare organizations to preserve and enhance our highly valued Canadian healthcare system so that it gets better in providing the necessary access and quality to meet the needs of Canadians. By identifying and responding to the healthcare needs of our communities, whether defined by risk or geography, and by ensuring that our graduating students and residents understand their obligation to and roles in society, we will be able to play our part and influence the changes in our system that are necessary to ensure an effective, efficient, equitable and sustainable system in the 21st century. We will continue to make good choices. The college, through its board and members, has chosen me to serve as president for the coming year. I accept this position with humility and commit to doing everything I can to the best of my ability to deserve the confidence that has been shown in me. I can conceive of no greater honor than, than to have been chosen by one's peers and to lead this organization that has done so much for the health and welfare of Canadians through the support of Family Medicine Education and its family physician members. Pour moi, il n'existe aucun honneur plus grand que celui d'être choisi par mes collègues pour diriger cette organisation qui a fait un travail remarquable pour la santé et le bien-être de la population canadienne. En appuyant l'éducation en médecine familiale et ses membres, les médecins de famille. I do not stand alone. I'm really just the face for a team that I cannot begin to thank enough for their support and guidance that has led me to standing here today. My deepest gratitude goes out to my predecessors, Drs. Rob Boulay and Kathy McLean, who have guided and taught me so much in the short period of time that I've been on the exec. I'd have been lost without your thoughtful and patient support. To the man everyone knows as Cal, 
as he really is one of a kind, Dr. Cal Guckin, a true national leader in family medicine in every sense of the word, and to whom I will forever be indebted. You are a true mentor, and most importantly, a true mensch. To my friend and colleague, Val Rackless, without whom in so many ways I would not be standing here today. To the always dependable and reliable Sarah Scott, I can't even imagine how I could contribute without her excellent administrative support. To my colleagues, past and present, on the executive, to all CFPC staff and directors, there are just so many to name, my sincerest thanks for your wisdom, warmth, and personal support every single day. I must also acknowledge that my colleagues and friends at the Tammy Latner Center for Palliative Care in Toronto, who cover and support my practice when I'm away working for the college. To Cheryl Levitt, another true leader in family medicine, and my leader at the Primary Care Network for Cancer Care Ontario, thank you for your confidence and guidance in enhancing my own leadership capacities. And to my network of family physician colleagues at Cancer Care Ontario, thank you for all your support. And to the guys, my family medicine buds, you know who you are, who check in on me regularly and never let me get too serious about anything, especially myself. Where would I be without you? I know this sounds like the Academy Awards and the music is just about to usher me off stage, but I'm just not finished just yet. Some of the most important is yet to come. I'm a truly lucky guy and filled with gratitude. Today in this audience, it's many of the most important people in my life. Firstly, Dr. Joseph Greenberg, or Dr. Joe, as most of us know him. A country doc in the city. The family doctor whom I knew, knew as a child, who made house calls to my ailing grandmother and just about everybody else in town. My inspiration for a career in family medicine, and who is still practicing family medicine well into his late 80s. He has come here today with great hardship. Joe, my heartfelt gratitude for all that you do and for showing me the way. You help me make very good choices in life. <laughs> to my wonderful siblings and sibs-in-law, my family doctor sister Ellen, her husband Stephen, my brother Lauren and his wife Rochelle, who have come from California to celebrate with me today. My sister and brother-in-law, Shelley and Gary, Brian and Jose, thank you for your love and constant support. And to my now five amazing kids, Daniel and his fiancee, Jill, Noah and his fiancee, Orit, and last but never least, Seth. You guys are the light and hope of my life. And to several of my wonderful nieces and nephews and friends who have made the special trip to celebrate with me today you extend my joy immeasurably. Thought I was finished, sorry, but I happen to be a 56-year-old guy who still has the amazing good fortune to have his four loving parents. My in-laws, Jack and Exeter Baker, and my parents, Murray and Fagy Buckman, who have all traveled here from Toronto to witness and share in my joy and celebration. My heart overflows to see you here today. Mais comme toujours, j'ai gardé le meilleur pour la fin. The best is always saved for the last. June 17, 1954, turned out to be a very special day for me, even though it occurred before I was born. It was the exact day in Vancouver that our college, the College of General Practice of Canada, the CFPC's original name, came into being. It was also on that very day, far away in Toronto, that the love of my life, my wife Gail, came into being as well. <laughs> she is my rock and the foundation on which everything else rides. I thank her from the bottom of my heart for her love, wisdom and unending support. As you can see, June 17, 1954, led me to make two very good choices. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. <laughs>